Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Uh, my name is Sharam Goodspeed Keaton, Director of Children's Opera Theater Production and Civic Impact for Fort Worth Opera. And I have in the blue chair again with me, Mr. Malcolm Payne Jr. Give hello. It up. I heard the thunderous applause. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, so Malcolm, today we are uh, celebrating Women's History Month. Um, for those of you who don't know, March is Women's History Month. And it, I think, was originally created to celebrate women throughout history um, that you might or might not see in the history books that had a great impact on the world as we know it. Uh, but the world as we know it sometimes is our mom or someone else who's currently living that may never make it into the history books. So those are the women that we want to honor today. Uh, so Malcolm, I'm excited to hear uh, from you. Um, I know that I've heard from a lot of your counterparts that um, really it was primarily the women in their lives that gave them the most guidance, the most great advice, encouragement, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. So, um, Let's see, let's say the top four, okay? I'll say that, top four. Talk to me about the top four women in your life um, that you feel made you Malcolm Payne Jr. So uh, I, would, I would have to say um, there are so many more than four. <laughs> so many more than four. Yes. Um, but uh, to start, I would have to say that, um, let's say number one would be Mary Dibbert. Mary Dibbard is um, music director at Dallas Hopper for the Educational Outreach Program. Mm -hmm. She's also on faculty at the University of North Texas. She was one of my first professors. Literally, I saw her the first day of classes at the oh, University wow. of North Texas as a vocal performance major in her French diction class. Um, and she has been a part of my career ever since. Mm -hmm. um, I still coach with her to this day. Um, I have her books. I use you know all of her resources and she has really been an advocate for me throughout my career um, mm -hmm. in more ways than I can recount, um, and, and probably more ways than I, I even know. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, <laughs> um, yeah. She she uh, is a fabulous uh, coach. She worked at the Paris Opera for seventeen plus years. Mm -hmm. um, speaks French fluently. Is you know the queen of French diction. Mm -hmm. And um, she is just a real advocate for young singers in general. Mm -hmm. um, but when she takes a liking to you, she really does, you know, go go to fight for you yeah. uh, whenever and however she can. So, um, so thank you, Mary Dimmer. Thank you. <laughs> um, in the same vein, one of her colleagues um, and another great great mentor of mine, uh, Christian Roberts, over at the Dallas Hopper. Yes, I, Christian. I, I know you know Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, that's my girl. And you know, Christian, she. She, when I say goes to, to, to box for you, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Um, yeah. She, I really do owe her so much. She um, is the head of uh, educational outreach program at Dallas Opera. Mm -hmm. She is also in the chorus at Dallas Opera. She yeah. is a fabulous singer. Um, she teaches voice. She's a fabulous voice teacher, a great mentor. Um, and again, she just advocates for young singers. And yeah. I don't know, I, I, I do know that my career would be very different uh, were it not for those two women specifically. Yeah. Um, just because they have really advocated for me in, in places where I would not know to advocate for myself, yes. would not be able to advocate for myself. And then at the same time, if, you know, if needed, it's like, hey, you need to get your life together. <laughs> and here's how. You know? We all need and, those people. And we, and we they're all so need important. Those. They're yeah. so important. Mm -hmm. But they've always been so supportive. They've always been so, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what else to say. It's, yeah. it's support, it's loving, it's caring. Yeah. Um, but I really do owe them a, a good chunk of, of who I am as a musician and who I am as a person today. Yeah. Um, Coming in at number three would be my voice teacher from the University of North Texas. Actually, it'll be both of them, um, <laughs> Molly <laughs> Fillmore and, and, and Linda DeFiore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a tie for number three. Um, I started at UNT with Linda DeFiore in 2012. Um, I stayed with her for two years, and there were her last two years at UNT. 
Um, then Molly Fillmore took her spot on the voice faculty, and I finished out my degree with her. Mm -hmm. And both of those women um, not only, you know, sculpted sculpted me as a singer mm -hmm. and as a as a you know singing actor and artist who sings opera on stage and other things, mm -hmm. um, but they have also been great mentors of how to live the lifestyle of an artist. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to to get in the practice room and to sing the scales and all those good things. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to, you know, hey, when you meet a conductor, you need to email them back within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. on your mm -hmm. first day at the at the Zitz Pro, or excuse me, at the music run through, you should go ahead and be memorized. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, you know, just these, the different tips and tricks to really set you apart from your colleagues. Yeah. Um, I remember Dr. DeFiore would not allow you to come into a lesson unless you were ready for an audition. And by audition, I mean suit and tie. Yes. Or for women, you know, with heels, stockings, and, uh, you know, a fabulous dress, mm -hmm. right? She wanted you to get used to working in that, that attire. Mm -hmm. Because you go for an audition, and it's your first time wearing a three-piece suit, and you say, Oh, now this is different. Now that this right. is here, now I have an extra layer on. Oh, now I'm unbalanced from the heel. She's like, no, no, no. Yeah, we're going to work in that. Yeah. We're going to work in that. You should be performance ready at all times when mm -hmm. you're when you're here. Yeah. You know, and it was it was the mentality of an artist that I think both of those women instilled in me. Molly Fillmore, the same way. Um, yeah. She is still in demand at the Met. Um, one story that I love to tell is that one day um, she. She invited me and my roommate at the time, who was my best friend in college, and we were doing a joint recital. Mm -hmm. And she invited me into, she invited us into her office, and she said, "Hey, I have to talk to you guys about your recital." And we're like, "Oh no, something's wrong. Like we have to cancel the recital. We got to move." I'm like, "Oh no, like what's happening?" And she's like, "The Met called me and wanted me to come audition for a role in one of their upcoming productions, <laughs> but it would put me out of town for your recital." Do you mind if I miss your recital and go sing for the Met? Wow. <laughs> wow. That was <laughs> we, wow we both so literally laughed at it. It's like, yes, please please go sing. It's okay. No, we, you, yeah. you can go sing for them. It's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll miss you, but you, you can go sing for them. That's okay. That's, Thank you. That's like Thank you for asking. Double, that's like, wow, that she thought enough of you all. And what you yes, want her to even exactly. ask something like exactly. that exactly. versus exactly. just calling in, like, I'm not going to be there. Exactly. Um, and, and that was the other thing. She yeah. was so committed. Not every professor went to, you know, uh, of course you want to go to your own students, but she would go to other people's recitals. Oh, wow. If she got to know you as a student in any way, shape, or form, she would try to show up to your things, you know. Mm. She would go see both cats at UNT Opera, no matter if it was her student or not, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's, it's. It was the presence and, and the commitment to the artist, mm, you know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and I, I'm so grateful for all those women in my life. Um, yeah. yeah. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Grazie. Grazie mille. Yes, indeed. Oh my gosh. So let me, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. If you had to think of your life as a whole, as a 100%, um, what percentage of your life do you think um, women versus men, what percentage of men um, have the greatest impact on your life as a whole? You know, I would say it's probably, um, I would probably say it's 80-20. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is, A big reflection on one the the weight that women carry in our society mm -hmm. you know um, women are teachers women are this women are that mm -hmm. and that's somehow derogatory as if every great scientist and every great doctor and every great rocket scientist and brain surgeon yes didn't need a teacher yeah. they need somebody to teach them three plus two mm -hmm. um, and, and more so than just my elementary school and my, you know, uh, pre-K through high school teachers, the women who have gone out of their way to do above and beyond, yes. you know, their duties to mm -hmm. say, hey, 
how you doing? What's up? Mm -hmm. I saw that you were doing this last year. You still doing that? Mm -hmm. Why not? Or mm -hmm. fantastic, keep doing it. Yeah. Or oh, that's a good reason, you know. Or maybe you should get back to doing that. Um, and and just checking in. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important because it really does take a village. Um, and Absolutely. I think, you know, specifically growing up in school, you know, you're at school for eight hours a day. You go home. You do. You you travel home. Don't forget that usually takes you know anywhere from right. an hour to two hours. Right. Um, maybe there's an after school program. Mm -hmm. You know your teachers. Those people are the people that you see most. Mm -hmm. The the people who educate you. Those those become your parents away from parents. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. They discipline you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they mm -hmm. they guide you. They nurture you. They mm -hmm. do all of those things. Um, and in that regard, it has again mostly been women. Um, I'm grateful to have had some strong men in my life as well, um, but yeah, it's 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 mostly been women for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, most every person that I have interviewed on camera uh, and just chatted with off camera have had very similar mm -hmm. uh, percentages, um, which I think is is part of the reason why I'm so excited, even if just for this month only. Um, that there is an open acknowledgement of um, not only the great women in history, but the women in our lives who make us great um, and that we couldn't do it without them. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm in agreement with that. Well, I'm very thankful for those women who yeah, um, got you to this point and those who will be your friends and your confidants and your coaches and your everything that'll continue to get yes, you further yes. uh, in your career. Um, gosh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Malcolm Payne Jr. Uh, we are chatting with you um, about Women's History Month. And I just want to encourage all of the women out there to continue to be a part of history in the making, continue to nurture and protect and teach and everything, um, all of the young people that come into your midst because you never know which one might be the next great opera singer of the world. So uh, happy Women's History Month to everybody. Happy and Women's History Month. <laughs> Thank you, Malcolm. Bye.